So being a leader is about how you see the world, it's about interpretation, right? Um, we say one of the major qualities of a leader is vision. And after, under, after trying to understand vision and how it works, I define it as the ability to see people, places, and things, not just the way they are, but the way they could be. It's the ability to recognize potential, ability to see a seed and to recognize the tree in it that would have seeds that would become trees, ability to see the forest in the seed, right? So what we then do is shift mindsets so that we see people in a new way, see life in a new way, see the opportunities that people call problems to the extent that what other people run away from is what we run towards, right? Um, just hearing our introductions, you know, makes me realize in this room we have, we have people that have vision, right? So I celebrate, I celebrate your vision, I celebrate your courage for starting, you know, starting organizations, non-profits, businesses, and, and so on. Um, I celebrate, oh, thank you, your unbreakable determination to succeed. Because you've got to have strong drive to have accomplished the things we've accomplished already. There's a lot of turbulence in our world right now. There's we have disruptions, <laughs> the pandemic, and then so many other things, the war in Ukraine, and then so many things going, weather issues and so on. There's technology, you know, chat GPT, right? And, uh, and then I'm reading, you know, stories constructed by this, by AI. And like, what? <laughs> a computer generated this, <laughs> not a human being. Uh, this world is going, so some people are going to lose their jobs very soon, honestly, you know? And so, so disruptions, changes going on, uh, but then we just need the courage to move ahead, the capacity to recognize the opportunities in all of those changes that are coming up now, and just the courage, courage to press ahead. I read something uh, about Steve Jobs, and he said, one of the most powerful principles of success he discovered as a young person was the power in asking. That's remarkable. He said at the age of 12, he was trying to do something, to construct something. He needed some material. And just went online, got the emails of top CEOs and wrote letters to them. 12 year old, wrote one of the founders of HP. You know, and he said most did not reply him, but is it Bill Hewlett now? You know, he said that was the guy that replied him, you know, and sent what it was that I was looking for. So since then, he told himself, there's no crime in asking. I said, ah, how many times have I heard that from the Bible? Ask and you shall receive, <laughs> seek and you shall find. I don't like asking. I don't like to bother people. I also don't like to hear no. <laughs> Who loves rejection, you know? But sometimes that I have asked, I have been amazed. <laughs> I have received, right? So I just want to encourage us not to stop asking, right? Not to stop asking. So, um, This is how we structure the day. We're starting with uh, leading business growth, and then we'll discuss sales leadership, then we'll discuss strategic leadership. That's how we structured it. And we'll take breaks in between, which will make it a bit more convenient for, or comfortable for those joining us online. Right. I mentioned earlier on, we raise high impact leaders here. We shift mindsets. Uh, I, I need to emphasize something. 
at the end of the day, what we're actually doing is to build a global community. That's what we're doing. We're building a community. I've been part of communities now for some four decades. And I mean, empowering communities, I mean. And they've been life-changing, honestly. I understand at the personal level, that thing we, we, we read in the Bible, it is not good for man to be alone. I understand it. Um, so at this Star Christian Center, we've built a community of tens of thousands of people. It's powerful, it's empowering. There's a basic need that every human has. When you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, he says at the lowest level, you have physiological needs, food, drink, sleep, and then next level, safety, security. After that, honestly, the other levels after that are intangible needs. When your material needs are met, intangible. And the first intangible need is the need for love, the need for belonging. It's an innate desire in us humans to belong to groups. That's why we love, we love to belong, you know, to groups. Because they're empowering. They, they even influence our sense of identity. You know, I am this, I am that. You find it's rooted sometimes in the groups that we belong to, even starting from the family. So, right now we want, we're building a community of leaders, right? A community of leaders that will empower one another. As the world gets more challenging, it's so important to be able to associate with people because there's power in association. I remember when, when I read in Robert Kiyosaki's book, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and it's a principle that I've known for a long time. I read it from King Solomon. He who walks with the wise will be wise, the companion of fools will be destroyed. But Kiyosaki put it in a practical way. He said, take a sheet of paper, write the names of the seven people closest to you. He said, if you are married, your spouse first. If you have children, he said, just write children. Give them only one space, <laughs> right? He said, fill the remaining five spaces. He said, hold the sheet of paper in front of you. He said, you are looking at your future. And it was like, <laughs> and it just hit me, boom. He said, the quality of your life won't be better than the quality of the people on that list. Whoa. He said, you can change just one person on that list and it will change the trajectory of your life. 